Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news and changes are needed as Ralph Rangnick comes under a little bit of pressure and Manchester United fans maybe start looking at what the future will be under Rangnick. I think the results last night overtakes the performance, of course it does, but look, you know what, there's some really bad performances yesterday. I mean, Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes, they've got to be the two that come under most criticism at the moment and probably both deserve to be dropped. But there is a bigger picture. Um, it was quite interesting interesting last night to see certain ex-players, you know, this is only Ranić's second game and they're already planting the seed of doubt. They can pretend that they're not, but we predicted this last week, even the week before. They're not going to give the patience they gave to Oli. There was things like, I want to know why there was no, no energy against Norwich yesterday. Well, we want to know why there's no energy against Norwich as well. But the reality is we know why there's no energy against Norwich because these players cannot be trusted at the moment and it's going to take a long time to go in the middle of the season from a pragmatic, lazy team to a front foot energetic team. And Norwich were more energetic than us. They weren't, I mean, Ranić said after the game, and we're going to talk about the changes and we are going to talk about Frankie De Jong because I think it's quite interesting around that midfield area um, and the changes that Ranić might need to make uh, longer term. Just on Frankie De Jong, by the way, um, look, there's a very real uh, prospect that he's going to leave Barcelona, very real. Uh, they, they're out of the Champions League. They're not in a race for Serie A. They need to generate money. It's a new start with them under Xavi and De Jong has not had a good season for them. And that's probably a consideration if you're thinking he's going to solve any problem that United think you think we have. But he is a, a player who's not having a very good season. We probably could get him for about £60 million. Pounds. Ideally, he would play in the midfield with a with a Fred or a McTominay and you know, you'd strengthen your midfield straight away. We need options. I think that was obvious yesterday. But it's not a sort of deal that's going to happen in January, I don't think. And I don't think United are going to sanction a £60 million spend in January. I think it's more of a summer deal. And I do think we need somebody coming in in January in that midfield. If you think about it, McTominay and Fred, I thought they were average yesterday. Some people wanted to give them slightly better than average. I thought they were average against Palace, apart from Fred, who was man of the match. But what, what struck me is that definitely one of them should have been subbed off against Palace. They got really tired in the second half. And definitely one of them should have been subbed off yesterday, and they didn't. And I think the reason he didn't do it is because he hasn't got anybody to do the job. Like Matic wasn't on the bench yesterday, so who do you bring on? Now, personally, I'd like to see Donny in that position, but it, you know, Donny came on for two minutes for, for Bruno. I mean, Donny probably is going to leave the club as, as things stand at the moment because he's got, you know, he's just not getting game time. But the midfield yesterday wasn't particularly bad, and people will go, oh, I'll give him a break, they played well. It depends where your standards are. I mean, they were nowhere near as bad as they have been under Ali, they were better, but we definitely need to be able to make a substitution in that area. Am I not right? I mean, it's a very, very, very energetic role to play in the midfield two of any system, especially that system. And they're playing 90 minutes every game. I mean, we've only had two games, but they're playing 90 minutes because he's got nobody else to, to go for. It's, it's absolutely essential as part of the change that we do bring in uh, people to play in that role. Because, look, the attack was not good enough yesterday. We'll talk about Rashford. We'll talk about uh, Bruno. But bringing in a De Jong or somebody in January is absolutely essential because Matic can't do that job. Does he think Donny can do it? Is Pogba really up for doing it? You know, looking to leave anyway, which means we're going to play McTominay and Fred between now and May. It's just impossible for that to happen, no matter how much you rate those two players. And look, they, they were not the worst players on the pitch yesterday, but they definitely should be being substituted, should be being rotated because it's a very demanding role. And at the end of the day, it's McTominay and Fred. You know, we are stretching a bit to try and find good in them because they've been so bad. There needs to be competition in that area. And, and, and I think Ranić... As much as he keeps protecting them and saying they did a good job, well, look, the blame yesterday, and Rangnick gave the blame, was, was the front four. Ronaldo, Rashford, Sancho and Bruno didn't play particularly well. And a lot of people have gone in on that. But I like to go a little bit deeper. And the reason yesterday I was like, I thought McTominay and Fred were average, I thought Maguire and Lindelof were average, is because people are trying to pretend that our back six were good yesterday against Norwich and it was the front four that caused us problems. I think the front four could have been better and we could have scored more goals, but let's look at the game, let's look at what Ranić said. Ranić sort of singled out the front four of not holding the ball up properly and that, that was fair, but he also said we didn't win enough individual duels and we didn't win enough second balls. Well, second balls are midfielders and defenders' jobs, really. They're not foot forwards. And duels, really, are more midfield and defenders' problems as well. And when you look a little bit deeper as well, we played Norwich, who will get relegated, who are not a very good side, who have got low confidence, and they were better than us. They deserved something out of the game. David De Gea was your man of the match on the player ratings by a long, long way. Um, and I think that when you look at the, the, the stats of the game, which are probably the only stats I ever really look at, possession, 50-50 more or less. Shots on target, 
five each and shots in general, 11 each. Well, how have we conceded 11 shots then? Is that Bruno's fault? Is that Rashford's fault? Is that Sancho's fault? Is it Ronaldo's fault? No, it's not. It's not. Somehow, our midfield in defence have allowed not have allowed Norwich to have 11 attempts at our goal. And one thing I would agree with, with what Gary Neville said last night is that if you play a better team, we would have been in massive trouble last night. We've won a game because of a penalty that was soft. We did nothing else to really win that game. There was no real big clear-cut chances. And I think that, you know, Norwich really should have got something out of the game. So there's a lot for, for Ranić to be thinking about. I certainly think you can detect in the so in the ex players and the media that they're ready to turn on him and you know will it be the manager's fault or will it be the players' fault? For me, it will always be the players' fault on a performance like yesterday. But change is needed. Now the the reality is that when we talk about that change, I think in the short term, and we all wish our best for Victor Lindelof. By the way, I mean we don't know the severity of that, but apparently. He was struggling to breathe and had a bit of chest pain, so they brought, took him off. I mean, realistically, that he needs to run the tests with that. We've had lots of uh, Christian Eriksen moments, you know, over the years, and we don't want anything like that. So, you know, all our wishes and and, and everything with with uh, Victor Lindelof, and obviously, I think Eric Bay should play against Brentford, which is only on Tuesday, which will be a tougher game at Brentford. Um, I think Brentford are a better team than Norwich and uh, they'll definitely be up for it. And they've got more pace in the attack, which is something United struggle with. But ultimately, ahead of that game, I think he's got to make changes. We'll do the preview tomorrow, but I think he's got to make changes. And look, I'm going to talk about two players here that are, that are two of my favourite players, but I'm not going to hide from the fact that I think, you know, McTominay and Fred get a lot of stick, Maguire and Lindelof get a lot of stick, but those four players, obviously barring Lindelof, will obviously play against Brentford because they, there is not really any competition for them. Varane's not fit. Um, Lindelof might miss the game anyway. And where was Matic at the, against Norwich? And he clearly doesn't want to play Donny in there. So by by process of elimination, they have to play. I mean, they weren't terrible against Norwich anyway. But I would say from a deeper point of view, you might think they play well. But explain to me why we're conceding 11 chances to Norwich. That's not because of Ronaldo or Rashford or Bruno or Sancho. They might have lost the ball higher up the pitch. But who's picking up the runners? I saw Norwich getting into our box time and time again with overlaps or midfielders breaking, well, that's on the fullbacks, that's on the centre-backs, that's on the centre midfielders. So you might want to look a little bit deeper at that sort of stuff as to, yeah, oh, yeah, they played really well yesterday. But did they play really well yesterday? Why did we concede so many chances? And if they've got 50% possession, that means that they've we've not won the midfield battle again, have we? So we've got to improve in that area. But in the short term, I think we're just going to have to get on with what we've got. And there definitely has been an improvement in that midfield engine area. But, you know, is that midfield engine area good enough to compete with the Chelsea's, even the Spurs and everyone like that. And that's the question mark. But at the moment, it should be good enough. So we're going to have to make changes where we need, to, where we can make changes. And where we can make changes is is in is in the attack. Um, starting off with Marcus Rashford. Look, he's, he, if he didn't have pace, he wouldn't be, in, he wouldn't be on the bench at the moment. He's, he's, he's just not, he's not at it. I don't know, I don't know why now. He's, he's had long enough to come back from his injury. Um, you know, I, I do want to say that the, the system that Ranić is playing is, is an exciting one, but it's also quite a confusing one because it's, um, you know, it's a front four. Bruno's been used to being played as the focal number 10. Sancho's been playing on the on the wide. Rashford's been playing on the wide and, and Ronaldo's been playing as a front two. And I think Ronaldo's the one who will adapt to it better because he will be better with the front two. And I certainly think if Cavani can get back fit, Cavani and Ronaldo is going to be different gravy to Ren Rashford and Ronaldo because Cavani will do a lot of the work that Rashford doesn't do and a lot of unselfish work that Rashford doesn't do and that will complement not only Ronaldo better but the number 10's better I think Ran Rashford at the moment and he, he doesn't press particularly well either he's I think Rashford uh, his performances recently are sort of not knocking us down to maybe having 10 players and then Bruno's been so wasteful with the ball you're almost being dropped down to nine players and I'm not I'm not giving Sancho or Ronaldo a free ride at all but you know Cristiano Ronaldo is Cristiano Ronaldo and Jaden Sancho does need consistency. He can hide behind consistency being his problem because he hasn't played games. But there is an issue with Bruno. I don't know what it is. Um, I still think he's arguably our best player, but at the moment he's out of form and there are options. You know, maybe Mason Greenwood could play there. Maybe Donny could play there. Maybe you could give Lingard a go. But we do need to make changes against Brentford because if we do go into that game like we did against Norwich, I suspect we will need another lucky win at best. So changes are required by Ranić. But I wouldn't read too much into, as I said, I wouldn't read too much into 
it's in general because it, he's only had a week in charge. I think he's sticking with the sim similar players that Oli did. I think he's very, very... One of, one of the big things for me is I think he's very, very reliant on Oli's coaches, and I don't like that. I don't like the fact that McKenna and Phelan are still there, that lots of other coaches are still there. It feels like a bit of half and half house. And I was this was mentioned to me a couple of days ago that from the training ground, it's still taking a long time to, to, to feel like there's real change. Like Ranić has very good ideas and the players are very impressed about it, but it's taking a, long, a lot longer to implement because you've still got this um, barrier of the coaches that are there because he's not brought many of his own coaches in. And, and what I was told is that when you normally get a new manager, then the out with the old and in with the new. And from day one, it's like this 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 goalkeeping coach is new, this set piece coach is new, this fitness coach is new, this is all new. And and every but it, but at United, Rangit can bring in as many new ideas as he wants, but over 75% of the coaches are still the coaches that Ollie had. So it's not new. And it's and what I was told is it's a bit weird for some of the players because they're being taught new things by people who've spent three years teaching them something else. And you can understand that, and I think that's going to be a slowdown. And I think maybe that's something that needs to hit the mainstream media because they don't think that deep. Um, and yesterday's performance was very Oli esque. I think I think the players fell into old habits, and I think that's why some of the best players we had yesterday were players that like it when we're back against the wall and we nick a goal you know very much like last season where we were grinding out results you know McTominay and Fred were reasonable Maguire and Lindelof were reasonable De Gea was man of the match the fullbacks were, were reasonable as well. well we we saw that all last year so I think it was a step backwards and we need a step forward um, and we're going to need it against Brentford and Brighton because they're two energetic sides but we should be looking at six points so but I, I think Mark I think he's got to make at least two changes to that team one because we played Friday night and it's a Tuesday too, because I think the performance was very lucky, and it dem he can't keep picking the same team. I think that's one of the big things. I, th I felt his substitutions yesterday were a little bit late, which can be forgiven, but he can't keep picking the same team. Like it doesn't warrant picking the same team. You've got a massive squad, and it sends the wrong message to keep picking the same team. So he's got to pick two players. But look, in relation to transfers, as I said, De Jong would be a very welcome addition for Manchester United. It's certainly possible, but not in January, unless United decide to spend big on a manager that they might not be keeping. I think United would be looking, if they did do business in January, to bring in somebody more of a Hadara, who's a half the price. But we, we desperately do need to bring somebody in there. And I think for long periods of the Norwich game yesterday, and obviously we've got Ricky on the show tonight, and we'll be talking about Bruno, I'm sure, and lots of other things, which I don't disagree with him on Bruno at the moment, on that one game. Um, but I think for long periods of that game yesterday, I was like, you know, the, the honeymoon's over already. And why is it over already? Why is there a lack of energy? Why was there a lack of effort? You know, we had half an hour against Palace and then Norwich played better football than us with a better intensity. And as I said, look, you can start picking out individual performances saying they played well. But I think the only person you can definitely say played well was David De Gea because when a team like Norwich have 50% possession, 11 shots, how can anybody on that team have had a good game? How are you, you know, I would imagine Liverpool, Norwich, sorry, Liverpool, Chelsea, Man City would play Norwich with... 70% possession, having 20 shots to Norwich's three. And that's what should have happened yesterday. And for some reason that didn't happen. So we didn't win the midfield battle. The front four were really poor. And time and time again, we were letting runners go, whether it's their fullbacks overlapping all that. And, and it just wasn't a good performance. So we need a big, big change. And I think he's got to make changes now. He's had a week in charge of that team. And I would be very surprised against Brentford if he didn't make some big changes because he's had long enough now to look at it. And yeah, he's won two games, but... I don't think anybody can look... I heard somebody say, well, that's two clean sheets. If you watched that game yesterday and you think that was a good clean sheet that was worked for, you've not, you've not watched the game. We got very lucky yesterday, didn't we? Um, but look, also in relation to transfers, as I said, I think we need to... We, the midfield needs something. And, and I'm not talking about whether that midfield played badly or not yesterday. I thought they were, I thought they were OK. Some people thought they were better than OK. But I disagree that we won the midfield battle because we didn't. And I also think the most important thing is not based on their performance. It's based on what we're doing going forward. You can't sub either of them at the moment. And I think in the second half yesterday, they were fading. I think against Palace, they were fading. We're going to play them against Brentford, Brighton. We're going to just going to play them every single game for 90 minutes. There's There's got to be an alternative. They've got to... One, there's got to be an alternative for um, fitness reasons because they're fading in, in later in games. But two, there needs to be competition. Like, you've got to have competition for places. Fred was brilliant against Palace. He wasn't as good against Norwich. What if he's what if he plays badly against Brentford and people are like, drop Fred? Well, for who? So we need to bring a midfielder in. And look, De Jong would be great. He would be absolutely great in that position. And he's not having a good season at Barcelona, but he's the sort of player that we would want. 
but there's plenty of other options and I think United need to, it's time for changes from Ranić. it definitely is. Yesterday was a bit of a worry that the bounce has only lasted a game, lasted a game and a half. He needs to get that bounce back and I think to do that he's going to have to make big changes and I think that is still with the coaching setup. As I said, you know, it's coming from the training ground, the players are excited by Ranić, but you know, they've still got coaches from three years ago telling them how to do something different when they've spent three years telling them to do something else. It is confusing and I think that might be why it's slowing down the progress. If this was a brand new reset with new coaches all over the place, I think the, the reset would be quicker and I think that's on the board, not on Ranić. He's not been allowed to bring in as many people he, as he wants to bring in because he's an interim and I think it hurt us yesterday. Anyway, interested to see your comments. Smash a like on the video. We're back tonight at uh, 8 o'clock with the live show. I'll be on that. It's Ricky, I think Adam and Beth. And uh, I'm doing Formula One watch along if you're interested in that on That's Football at 1 o'clock. Hamilton against Verstappen. If you're not, if you're interested, tune in. Thanks for watching.